the low Earth orbit and on the orbit around the Earth. Uh, more than 90 companies or agencies have proposed the satellite constellations. The major fields of applications for these proposals are Earth observation for science and business uh, oriented goals, space observation and communication. On this plot, you can see the estimated number of satellites launched yearly. So the black dotted line represents the cumulative sum of all the uh, satellites together. So non-classified stands for the companies which are not uh, set expected time for this satellite. But you can see how in time the number is satellites is increasing and by 2026 there will be almost 10,000 satellites on the orbit. Um, as I mentioned, there are main application fields for these constellations. First is Earth observation for weather disaster uh, and fast response monitoring in case of emergencies and communications um, mostly powered by Internet of Things, machine-to-machine uh, -machine application, broadband communication and Internet. Communication field has one of the highest and one of the greatest potentials. So first of all, on one side, we have Internet of Things era, which is requesting um, uh, the, infra the current infrastructure to handle uh, large amounts of data and to guarantee service uh, in any position on Earth. On the other side, there is a potential in weather sciences, safety and security, and fast response in disaster monitoring. Um, most of the targeted uh, applications are uh, going with different strategies, um, occupying different orbits, either medium or low Earth orbit constellations, uh, large or small satellite numbers. Uh, but basically, everybody is uh, targeting the full coverage of the Earth. Uh, on this slide, you can see uh, small sat constellations uh, for communication purposes were planned during 90s and a global star uh, at 84 satellites and uh, eight, eight different places at medium orbit. Um, they went bankrupt at some point, but then uh, got reorganized and still operation in right now. So ICO, Odyssey, Skybridge and Teledesic are also different uh, constellations for communication with from 10 uh, to 840 different satellites, uh, which these projects have been cancelled. Uh, Iridium is another one which we will review today with 66 satellites, uh, also got bankrupt and reorganized. Orbcom uh, with 35 initial satellites when also bankrupt and reorganized. From this table, we can clearly see that in 90s there was not enough um, business potential in the constellations. What's the state of today? Uh, from 2010 until 2020, uh, following projects uh, have been announced or uh, been in, in plan under development. The so Amazon-driven Kuiper project with 3,236 satellites uh, in different orbital planes, uh, like 90, uh, yeah, 98 orbital planes on different altitudes is currently under development. And we also know that Amazon is expanding the ground station network um, pretty actively. So uh, big ambitions and big plans. Um, Boeing uh, has been filling the frequencies applications with uh, FCC. However, the status is currently undisclosed. So we know that there are going to be more than almost 3,000 satellites. Um, but there are no update about the status. So the LEOSAT, uh, medium Earth uh, constellation with uh, around 100 satellites was cancelled. One web was, uh, went bankrupt and then um, in, the, in, in the middle of last year, it's been restructured and brought back to life. Uh, 13B has 20 satellites uh, in equatorial plane, it's operational. Um, another like subsidiary and power uh, is under development. Um, Samsung also uh, still did not disclose its plans for 4,600 4, satellites. However, also filled the application for frequencies. Um, Starlink uh, satellites is a little bit more than 500 
40 satellites launched today by the absolutely huge constellation uh, in different planes, uh, in different orbits um, to provide broadband internet. Um, Telesat, uh, Viasat, and uh, Telesat V-Band are undisclosed or under development uh, currently. Um, um, relating to challenges, there are uh, three major challenges these constellations might face uh, in the near future. I think we will more go in more detail uh, later in the presentation. Uh, a few statistical facts about this constellation constellations. Uh, so if we uh, accumulate them by satellite numbers, so the most of the constellations have less than 50 satellites in them. Most of the proposed constellations, not only communication constellations, uh, around 22% uh, have from 50 to 150, um, and only 6% have more than 500 satellites on orbit. Um, regarding the satellite sizes, uh, most of the satellites are nano, with a mass of less than 10, K, 10 kg. 35% um, of them are medium, with a mass less than 100, and my 17 are micro, with a less uh, the mass from 10 to 100 uh, kilograms. Um, so what was in the past? So the uh, idea of the constellation of satellite was uh, pretty much 20 years ago when Iridium and Global Stars were the first one to provide satellite connectivity. They were offering communication links um, and they were competing with terrestrial cellular network. Um, like today we can see who won this battle. Uh, terrestrial cellular network were like more the better fit into the market demand at that moment. Um, the, at, back in the 90s, the business model uh, developed by Global Star and Iridium services was not uh, sustainable enough due to well, like, pretty small markets and the high maintenance costs. Uh, and right now we're gonna go in detail uh, to this constellation's uh, history and the products. So the Global Star is an American satellite company. It's operating in Leo. Uh, it has uh, 42 satellites right now on orbit, on Leo orbit, and it provides uh, communication, uh, phone and low speed data communication. Uh, on this image, you can see the coverage uh, of the Global Star satellites. It has, the company has 350,000 subscribers worldwide in 120 countries. Um, yeah, the, the coverage is almost global. Uh, still some parts in the Arctic and in Africa are missing. Uh, regarding products and application, um, Global Star main part is to provide mobile satellite voice and data services. Um, there's no internet, so it's not possible to use uh, like uh, WhatsApp or Telegram or other internet um, based uh, applications. However, um, product line includes mobile and fixed satellite phones, simplex and duplex satellite modems, airtime packages, uh, and track and personal safety de devices, uh, which I personally used, and it was like super, super awesome. Um, it's super small and quite precise. Uh, yeah, so I, I was satisf a satisfied customer of uh, Global Star. Um, on this slide, you can see some other products. Um, so the yeah, cellular phones, pretty big ones with big um, analog part um, hotspots for Wi-Fi. That's um, I think pretty new products in their product line. Transmitters, um, development kits, going educational, and some sport spot trackers for uh, for people for asset management. Uh, the solar powered asset management units, which is possible to attach, for example, to containers uh, in the ships and satellite transmitters. Uh, regarding the applications, um, there are several land based customer segments or assets and personal tracking. Um, Global Star is aiming to access like a new remote areas beyond the reach of cellular and landline networks. 
Um, so the customer segment include oil and gas government, mining, forestry, commercial fishing. Uh, you can see the list of the rest on the slide. I said and personal tracking um, is um, the basis of the supervisory control in data acquisition applications. And uh, one of the possible applications might be um, the, like uh, some extreme sports, uh, people who are doing extreme sports. Uh, a few major facts in the history. Uh, so the project was launched in 99, in 91st uh, as a joint venture. In 95th, it received the allocation of frequencies uh, it's applied for. In 98, the first satellite was launched. Um, overall, the system deployment was a little bit delayed until um, later due to the launch failure of, uh, of Soyuz. In 2000, it uh, has been uh, completed by the 52 satellites, so 48 satellites and four spares. Um, in 98, um, yeah, the first call of the global stellar system was placed and the system was tested. In 99, um, system became began the friendly user trials where uh, the constellation of the satellites was completely utilized. Uh, in 99, um, so the co complete commercial service with first 200 users began. Um, in 2000, uh, it became full commercial service uh, with within the North America, Europe and Brazil. And the initial price was $1.79 uh, per minute. In 2002, um, the bankruptcy came and um, non-sustainability of the business model was proved. However, in 2004, the global star restructuring was completed and uh, the company was back to life. In 2007, global star launched uh, another eight spare satellites uh, to compensate some like failured or lost satellites from 2010 to 2013. Um, there was a second generation uh, of 24 uh, satellites to restore uh, the full potential of the service. And in March 2020, um, Global Star has announced the third generation um, with, with capabilities of 5G um, like variants. Um, let's have a closer look on the satellites uh, of the Global Star. Uh, on this picture, uh, you can see the beautiful render uh, provided by Italia Selenia Space uh, Company. And basically, uh, the satellites belong to the US for a communication application type. Uh, the contractor uh, who built the satellite uh, was Alenia Space. As for equipment, there were 16 S-band transponder and 16 L2C band transponder. Um, the, a light bus um, 1000 uh, was the basis of the satellite uh, carrying this equipment. Um, and as we, get, we will see later, this bus was used uh, for many um, satellite, like sat big satellite buses for communication purposes in the future. Uh, the power system consisted of two huge deployable solar ar arrays with 2.4 kilowatts um, at the beginning of life and batteries, uh, the satellite lifetime uh, was set to 15 years, the mass 700 grams, and as for orbit, the mu orbit with 52 degrees uh, inclination uh, was chosen like for the first part of the constellation and 920 kilometers uh, for the phase in orbit. All right, uh, we can see once again the the picture on the right, the a light bus with transponders installed on the satellite. Um, so basically the bus carried two gigabyte mass memory uh, with uh, 690 kilobit per second S-band transmitter. Uh, for telemetry, uh, the bus could be used basically for 500 to 1,500 kilometers. Um, the precision added control was set to 0 0.05 with a set of sensors accommodated on the satellite. Um, 
right? Which was like the attitude control was fully redundant with uh, Ranger, Star Trek, GPS, reaction wheels, and magnetic talkers. Uh, all right, so that's um, the brief uh, description of the global star service and the satellites. And we can jump to the next one, uh, Iridium constellation. Um, Iridium provides uh, the constellation, provides an advanced voice and data information coverage through phones, pagers, uh, pagers in the past, and integrated receivers. Uh, Iridium um, owns and operates its own constellations and also sells equipment and uh, equipment and services. So if you go to the website of Iridium, you'll see that uh, they have like, two lines. Uh, one is dedicated to products and like phones and trackers. Another one is complete service coverage. Uh, it was founded in back in 1987 and 88 was protected by Motorola. Um, and the fixed price contract uh, was from like developed by Motorola from 1993. And in 1998, the system became operational and commercially available. So like almost 10, a little bit more than 10 years after it, it has been founded. The constellation consists of 66 active satellites and it, they orbit in um, the Earth on the height of 781 kilometer with inclination of 80. 6.4 degrees and on the left you can see the fleet uh, the render of the fleet of iridium satellites and on the right you can see uh, the, the coverage which uh, the satellites are providing regarding applications um, it's pretty much the same application fields that global star is targeting so it's maritime uh, tracking of ships ships communication uh, voice calls from ships IoT. A growing sector of IoT requires some connectivity not dependent on the cellular networks. Uh, land mobile is uh, also almost the same and aviation almost the same what Global Star is providing. Um, yeah, and like uh, on the website, uh, is uh, specifically targeted the US government as a separate field of applications for Iridium. Uh, right. Land, in terms of things, aviation, enterprise, government, it's like all the places um, where the cellular network cannot be reached. Uh, uh, Iridium provides their solutions there. Um, on the website, it's also possible to find there's a huge list of different products, starting from like small transceivers uh, to uh, phones, satellite phones, or to these kind of transceivers, which can be installed on the airplanes. Um, from plan details, it's possible to acquire monthly plan fee, like monthly plan uh, with one of these phones and like for. Um, 10 voice minutes, 10 text messages, uh, the price is 55, like $56 and 400 is 90. Uh, it's got, it sounds quite a lot uh, compared to the cellular uh, networks we are all used to or the internet we're uh, having every day. Uh, yes, however, yeah, uh, it works. A few words about the history. So um, the constellation was, um, the company was founded in early 90s. Um, so the, the basic idea was to provide communication independent from mobile uh, cellular networks. Uh, early calculations showed that 77 satellites would be needed. That's where the name Iridium comes from uh, after the metal with atomic number 77. However, it turned out that just 66 satellites were required to cover all the planets. And um, yes, once again, on the left, you can see uh, the satellites and the intersatellite links between them and the full coverage uh, of Earth and their intersections. Um, the first generation constellation was uh, financed by Motorola and the satellites were deployed from 97 to 2002. Um, Iridium employed uh, like pretty diverse fleet of satellites, uh, taking different launch opportunities into account, like uh, from US, uh, Russia, and China. Um, 
60 satellites were launched on 12 uh, Delta two rockets. 21 was launched on Proton, um, two on rocket, 12 on Long March. And the first test telephone call was made uh, in 1998, resulting in full global coverage uh, in 2002. Even though the system was um, like working, functional, and uh, from the technical perspectives, there were no showstoppers, uh, this was absolutely not a success in the market due to insufficient demand uh, at the price which was offered. So the company failed really badly to get the sufficient amount of revenues, uh, thus resulting as one of the largest bankruptcies in the US history in general. Um, however, the constellation continued operational, like continued being operational after the bankruptcy. Um, after that, the new entity has emerged, um, a new product, including new product placement and uh, like updated pricing strategy. Uh, so the idea was to provide reliable service uh, in, in the places on the planet where traditional satellites cannot uh, get access to. So the, from the 2002 to 2017, there were no new satellites um, yeah, on orbit at that moment. However, um, in January 2017, the second generation of Iridium satellites has been started. Um, that uh, was boosted by uh, the huge two billion contracts uh, with Thales Selenia Space Company. And here, like we remember about that, um, the bus uh, which was used for the global start, this was almost the same bus. Um, SpaceX was contracted to launch uh, this uh, the fleet of 81 satellites with Falcon 9. And deployment of this constellation began in 2017. In 2019, SpaceX launched uh, additional 10 satellites and upgraded the amount to 75. In January 2019, 20. Um, Iridium was certified. Uh, that's a, that's a, actually a pretty cool thing to use to be using global maritime distress and safety systems. Um, the cool thing about this is that uh, there was another company, British company, Imasat, which was um, holding this license for for a long, really long time since 1999, uh, and they were holding that like only by themselves. So that was, that's a huge step, I think, from the business perspective to a region company. Here on the left, you can see uh, like eight satellites um, close uh, closing uh, the fairing, like on the fairing with encapsulator around it and preparation for the launch. Uh, the big point in the Iridium uh, constellation History is the collision which happened in 2009. So the region with the satellite number 3033, 30, it collided with Russian satellite Cosmos to 2251. Um, that was pretty much the first huge hypervelocity collision between two artificial satellites in low Earth orbit. Um, so they collided on a pretty high speed and created a huge amount of particles in the low Earth orbit. Um, so here on the pictures, you can see the point of collision and debris after 20 minutes and after 50 minutes. Uh, and this on this plot, it's much more observable, the spatial density of the, but that's the hugest, the biggest peak in the space debris density in low Earth orbit um, ever happened. Um, so the orbit of 800 is uh, quite quite dangerous right now to be on. Uh, so the first uh, Iridium satellites were based on the platform LM700. A few details about that. Um, the Iridium was the operator. Um, Lockheed Martin was developing the bus for as a contractor. Um, the satellite had two big deployable solar arrays and batteries with a lifetime of eight years, uh, which is double less than a global star had with mass of 700, almost 700 grams, and the orbit uh, also double 
less than the global star with 86 uh, degrees inclination. Uh, the satellite had three exostabilized uh, hydrazine boosted propulsion system. Um, two solar panels which were moving uh, to get direction to the sun, L-band uh, transmitter to provide voice at, at 4.8 kilobits per second and data at 2.4 kilobits per second with a 16 uh, decibel margin, which is pretty good. Um, 48 spot beams uh, were used for Earth coverage in KA band for crosslinks and ground commanding. Uh, regarding the next generation of the satellites, um, next Ceridium constellation is going to consist of 66 satellites uh, in six different planes. Um, orbit targeted orbit is polar with 780 kilometers in inclination, like the same, this still same inclination. Um, it's the next generation period was 2015 to 2016 and. Uh, mission lifetime doubled uh, to 15 years from eight years. Uh, this time, uh, to mitigate the risks, uh, Iridium has some spare, like six in orbit space and six hangar spares. Um, additionally, to this, uh, to, to the main mission of the satellite, it also carries radio occultation for measuring um, some atmospherical parameters. Altimeters for monitoring the height of the sea, uh, broadband radiometers uh, for radiation belts, uh, radiation budgets, monitoring uh, multi multispectral imaging for ocean color and land imaging. And uh, there are a couple of other potential missions area which uh, can be targeted with this defined set of the payloads. Um, right. Um, right, so here, uh, this one is the next uh, generation satellite. Um, it's 860 kilograms with two kilowatt of power provided by solar panels. It's almost 10 meters when uh, all the solar panels are deployed. Uh, yeah, so for RF communications, it uses L band and KA band, uh, 48 beam transceivers, uh, fast array antennas, uh, yeah, much more advanced compared to the initial LM satellite architecture. Uh, all right, so uh, these were two examples of constellations uh, built and founded back in 90s. And right now I'm going to cover two constellations which are younger, much younger, were started uh, only last decade. One web is the first one. Uh, initially, it was planned to be a 650 satellite constellation. The initial plan also was com to complete it in 2019, 2020, with, provide, with a goal to provide uh, internet broadband and to start the global services in 2001. The, so there were a couple of... Uh, renamings uh, and restructurizations in the story of this company. It was formerly known as World Blue Satellites um, with like offices around the world. Um, it was a, like the constellation was aiming to occupy 18 orbital planes with 36 uh, satellites on each uh, in the altitude of 1,200 kilometers and 87.9 uh, degrees inclination. Another point in the constellation design was to make it scalable and to basically update the satellites in different orbital planes. Um, the initial concept was to build the 150 kilogram satellites with electric uh, ion propulsion. Uh, each of the satellite could cover like 1,000 to 1,000 kilometer footprints. Um, as the main technology to provide uh, this service, the Q and KA bands were uh, selected with uh, 10 gigabits per second maximum capacity for the satellite. So compared to Global Star and uh, Iridium early developments, like several thousands of kilobits per second, this is uh, a, a way above that. Um, this is, so the main service uh, areas would be remote small cell networks 
wild broadband uh, with a speed up to 15 megabits per second and the really low uh, latency uh, around 15 milliseconds that's basically the architectural well, yeah, the architectural uh, representation of the service so leo based cancellation of the satellites connects user terminal ground networks and point of presences User terminals are done via like small and compact devices and can be installed play on plane ships on home uh, or any other uh, devices which require internet access. Um, yeah, so like from innovation perspective, uh, like electronically scanning antenna vendors were uh, one of the unique selling points of one web for multiple beamform and, and satellite tracking. A um, few words about the history. So the initial concept uh, was born in May 2014. It included 20 satellites operating in 20 different orbital planes to provide internet coverage. Um, in 2014, in June, this world war, uh, Square the satellite spectrum owned by Skybridge, and the Skybridge is not a communication constellation provider which went bankrupt. Um, later in 2014, uh, there was a tender, uh, so they, they issued a tender for manufacturers of the uh, for the manufacturing of these 640 satellites, and uh, at that moment also they already secured uh, radio frequency spectrum. Actually, you can compare how uh, from the start of the company until the a RF spectrum uh, licensing, uh, it's only half a year have passed when we were talking about the region, like five years have passed since they secured the frequency. So the process is uh, really accelerated. In June 2015, um, there was a modification in the plan to deploy a larger constellation of 720 satellites uh, and to increasing the orbit uh, to 1,200 kilometers. In 2016, the idea went back to 704 satellites. Um, in December 2016, the major investment came with 1 billion uh, from SoftBank. Um, and in 2017, maybe taking this uh, amount of investment into account, uh, the constellate, uh, constellate, so the satellite constellation size increased to almost 2,000 satellites. Uh, yeah, and then in March, there was a solid uh, plan to add 2,000 more in V-band satellite uh, for non-geosynchronous orbits, and that uh, application for frequencies was also done at that moment. Um, in the summer 2018, the company backs up, uh, saying that they still need only 600 satellites. So I, it's hardly, it's hard to imagine what, <laughs> what was the motivation uh, be between these uh, changes every year, changes in the amount of constellations. Uh, however, in February and March, OneWeb completed its first two successful launches of 34 satellites uh, on the Soyuz, ro um, Soyuz rocket. Um, however, in the March of last year, um, OneWeb uh, affiliating and filling the bankruptcy uh, with, the ra like, with difficulties raising another uh, round of capital uh, and deploying like 90% of the network of the satellites. Uh, in July last year, um, the UK government and Party Global won the uh, option to buy the company and invest. Uh, there was an investment of 7 billion and basically this year on 15th of January, like uh, actually several, several days ago, yes, like five days ago, there was an announcement of additional funding from SoftBank uh, of additional $1.4 billion, uh, which will, based on what is one web management is saying, which will be enough to deploy the rest of the satellites by the end of 2022nd, which I'm a little bit suspicious about. And on the right here, you can see the satellite bus and the satellite preparation procedures on the Cosmodrome. Uh, in order to build this huge amount of satellites, OneWeb built the uh, huge manufacturing facility in Florida. It's like uh, almost 14,000 square meters in size. 
um, huge survey of it dedicated to integrations and tests of the satellites. Um, um, right, right. Uh, I can mention here that production of 900 satellites in total uh, was planned for this facility with peak production rate of one, two satellites per day. That's a really crazy amount of satellites. But uh, we will see in SpaceX is even more, more ambitious. Uh, here you can see the first satellites uh, in the Toulouse, in Airbus, which are ready for shipment, like big transponders, uh, stoked solar panels. Uh, a few words about the platform. So um, the platform is called Arrow for um, the constellation. Um, it aims to go to Leo at 1,200 kilometers. Um, launch mass of the 34 satellites together is five tons as propulsion. It uses plasmic propulsion system, lithium ion batteries. Uh, there are two Omni antennas, two Q band antennas, and two K band antennas. For us, for stabilization, it uh, incorporates three axis uh, control system. It's really impressive uh, how the fairing with uh, a lot of uh, satellite looks like I think people are so small. Um, and yeah, and a few words about uh, the Arrow platform. Uh, you can see here. I will share the slides afterwards, and you have you can have a, a close look. I will just continue because we don't have much time left. Uh, Starling constellation is the um, I think the one the most ambitious and the most. Uh, yeah, the most famous constellation everybody is aware. Um, and last summer, I think a lot of people have seen the snakes of uh, stars crossing the sky. Um, so the Starlink is the constellation to provide uh, internet. The constellation will consist of thousands of mass produced satellites on Leo. Um, and the production rate of SpaceX is currently 120 satellites per month, uh, which is enormous. Um, this is the initial plan for the Starlink uh, constellation. We can see that it covers like absolutely all the Earth uh, with 1,584 satellites in 72 different orbital planes. And this is the plot with uh, satellites on the orbit since May 2019. Um, and we can see that uh, every launch. Yeah, so in total, there were almost 900 satellites launched. Uh, in October 2020, the amount of satellites decreased. This is due to the test of the orbiting system. So actually SpaceX is taking this topic of space debris quite seriously, uh, proven that after end of life, the satellites will be able to do orbit and decommission. Um, all right. Um, the initial 1,200, like 12,000 satellites uh, were planned to occupy three different orbital shells. Uh, you can see there which bands they would occupy and how many of the satellites would be. And on the right, you can see the fairing, uh, like almost encapsulated fairing with uh, Starlink uh, packed uh, satellite assembly. Um, a few words about the history as well. So the SpaceX was announced in January 2015, like actually a couple of months later when after the OneWeb was announced. In November 2016, uh, already SpaceX filed application for uh, NGSO with uh, fixed satellite uh, service using KU and KA bands. In March 2017, uh, filed the plans for another 7,500 for V-band satellites. In November 2018, uh, approval was received to deploy this 7,518 broadband satellites. Uh, June 2019, there was another frequency application for another test of, of 270 
ground terminals. So uh, ground, SpaceX is also deploying a huge ground station network around the world. Uh, in November, as of November 25th, SpaceX has launched almost a thousand uh, Starlink satellites. So these are just like really impressive numbers. Um, as for today, total uh, amount of satellites launches to 955. 64 satellites were deorbited um, for experimental purposes. So right now there are 891 satellite of starting satellite on orbit. Um, a few words about the like the satellites themselves. The really detailed information is not as available as about one web or Iridium or global star satellites. But what we know is that the mass is uh, 227 kilograms. Uh, so the design is the flat panel and the huge antenna, uh, array antenna is deployed uh, in a single array um, solar, solar panel. Um, satellites are using Hall effect thrusters with Krypton as a reaction mass. Um, they use Star Tracker for precision. 95% um, of components um, are quickly burning in the atmosphere. There's like echo satellites, um, self, uh, self decom decomposing satellite in the orbit. Um, and these satellites are using optical intersatellite link and phase array beam forming for processing KU and KA bands. So they are uh, pretty smart about their F spectrum and the availability of frequencies. Um, so optical communication is uh, also the core of, um, of the service. Um, the first 60 satellites were launched in November 2019. Uh, the, the 60 satellites which were launched in, the level on, in November, they had this uh, char additional characteristics. So KA band was not added to the satellites before, so then mass uh, increased and then bed or reduced, and I will talk about that a little bit later. Um, on this picture, you can see like the table with uh, planned number of satellites per orbit shells and satellites operational. Um, here you can also see when the, when the planned half size completion time will be achieved or, or the full size completion time will be achieved. So by 2027, pretty much all the satellites are supposed to be on the orbit. And right now SpaceX is also only filling the, uh, the first, the first orbit and halfway to go still. Um, signal pollution is a big uh, topic regarding, uh, in general, communications constellations, in general, small satellite constellation. If we think that they're gonna be 10,000 satellites uh, soon, and in case they're using ion thrusters as Starlink satellites are using, um, the level of pollution of uh, in visual spectrum is going to increase significantly. And these pictures are done with like radio telescopes. Uh, and we see that um, sci scientists might get really annoyed uh, by, by this pollution. Uh, this is why in the next uh, satellite, um, next uh, generation satellites of Starlinks, I bet it was significantly reduced. Right, uh, so we have five minutes left of the lecture and I'm going to conclude this with uh, future challenges of constellations. Um, so basically, large constellations, not only communication, but uh, Earth observation as well, they are going to face uh, maybe three major Challenges, first one is technical, management, and regulatory. And as proposed solutions, uh, there can be opt optimization of automatic satellite tracking or automatic failure detection. And we're gonna go through, through these topics in more detail right now. From the constellation management, um, it might make sense to split, split the tasks between payloads and spaceport operations. Um, and uh, dedicating uh, the ground segments for one uh, 
for each of these two tasks. So splitting the tasks for the ground station between these two big blocks of tasks. Um, the automation on board of the spacecraft uh, might be increased. Um, this is in terms of failure tolerances, uh, maybe self decommissioning and so on. Um, take, taking not only the ground segment into account, but operations from the early design stages uh, and from the early constellation design might also help to solve problems in the, in the later stages. And expert systems shall be designed to assist operations. For example, mitigated behavior workload during the launch and early orbit phases. Communication um, is the key of the constellation services, uh, communication and uh, low latency. And onboard automation is unlikely to grow uh, as, um, as to provide autonomous fleet management. Um, the large amount of satellites will still need uh, the conduct communications with ground stations. Um, the constellations are designed usually for the real time and for like 24, 9, 24 7 purposes. And they might require the big data to upload or download at any time. Solutions here might be infrastructure optimization. Uh, as I said, using the uh, splitting the ground station tasks or utilization of 5G services or avoiding radio spectrum uh, and using the optical communication uh, technology here. Uh, regarding space traffic management, um, there's, as we've seen with Iridium, um, space debris can become a hot topic. Um, as for solutions, uh, there might be alternative uh, devices or alternative services for active re removal and space-based surveillance networks. And here you can see two proposals for active debris removal devices or satellites or on-orbit servicing uh, with an option to decrease the amount of their satellites. Uh, however, this approach is pretty costly and um, technologically challenging. So this will include like docking, um, orientation determination of the satellite and so on. Um, so the, in the space traffic management, the first solution uh, it looks more, much more attractive. Regarding the technical challenges, uh, machine learning might support some machines um, due to health and address management issues. Uh, neural networks can enhance space traffic management. Uh, regarding this huge amount of uh, satellites in orbit. And space transponders um, can be enhanced by using the corner reflectors on board GPS services, receivers for better satellite tracking. And as a conclusion, um, I would like to say that the general trend uh, has been noticed uh, in launching big constellations of small satellites. So it's clear and it was well established for the last two decades. Um, small satellites are the core of this constellation idea as they're not so big and they're pretty easy to develop and much um, cheaper to launch. Uh, spacecraft constellations are appealing in major fields, communications for global coverage, Earth observation for near real time measurements and space observation for continuous monitoring and surveillance. And uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting time. New service is going to uh, be available, especially uh, looking forward to the satellite internet uh, provision. All right, um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, the, the second day as well as the first one. Um, if you have any questions, uh, I will be happy to answer them. Thank you. Okay, any questions to our lecturer? Any qu questions or feedback? Yeah, feel free. Uh, about feedback, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, just for questions. Okay, if there's no questions, please again about presentations. Can you share them with us? Yeah. yeah, so I will I will share both of them yeah, together. Yeah.
the grades. Yeah, just curious, um, which topic did you like uh, more in the first day? Uh, CubeSat general, then CubeSat specifics, or constellation topic? So, if there is no answers for myself, the second day is more because it is, how to say, uh, more with applications and uh, future demands. And I mean, uh, what's going on for now and what would be in the future. That's why I, for me, the second is more interesting for me. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that, that, that's a very, yeah, passive. Abdulaziki also says second day. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, please write. Please write in the chat. Uh, constellations, okay. Yeah, good to know. <laughs> Thank you very much. Спасибо большое, and good luck. Uh, have a good day, and I hope uh, how to say our collaboration would be fruitful, and we'll wait for future collaborations. Спасибо большое. Да, спасибо большое, да, э, надеюсь, еще увидимся. Да. Спасибо, очень интересно. Спасибо. Да. До свидания. До свидания, спасибо большое. Я отключаюсь.